All right. What's up, everybody? Looks like we're uh, just just going live. <clears throat> oh, I guess I should start muting if I'm going to cough like that. Uh, let me head to my channel for a second, see what's going on. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, I just got the other screen up so I can see what's going on. What's up, everybody? It's, uh, I know it's been a while since I was uh, streamed on here. I've been traveling. I've been out of town, been on vacation. I got COVID, finally. Took me like two years. I was trying, finally got it. It's all right. Uh, but anyway, I did get COVID. I was sick. Uh, as I said, I was traveling. I was on vacation, so I haven't been on for a while. Uh, so I wanted to talk about, so today, uh, you know, back when I was sick, back on June 24th, right? Everybody knows about the Supreme Court decision uh, in the Dobbs case, overturning, effectively overturning uh, Roe v. Wade and uh, Planned Parenthood versus Casey. And of course, the my social media, the internet, it just, it just lit up, right? All the demons came out, everybody was screaming, screeching, rending their garment, whatever, right? Uh, it was very frustrating for me, especially as a teacher. So I've been thinking about a couple things uh, but as I said, I was traveling, I've been sick, I haven't been able to do this. Uh, and so I thought about today, uh, you know, back at work, I'm filling out oh, bogus paperwork for the state right now, uh, the life of an administrator. Uh, and so I'm kind of taking a quick break from all the paperwork nonsense. I have my uh, my afternoon coffee. Here we go. Uh, shameless plug, right? So I am drinking the Heavenly Roast Coffee, the Seraphim Blend. The link is the description. Uh, is in the description. Go get yourself some coffee. Great coffee. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video, although they could be. Uh, but no, go check out some Heavenly Roast Coffee. I've got mine. Uh, mm. Oh, and it's very good. And I needed it while, you know, filling out paperwork for the state. But while I'm taking a quick break from that, let's then get into, all right, so I, I want to talk about the philosophical argument concerning abortion, right? And I want to look at some, uh, so I want to look at the argument of just in of absolutely against abortion. I want to look at some of the most common objections that I've seen that people use to argue in favor uh, of abortion. Uh, and then finally, I want to look at, there was this article I found on uh, Yahoo a couple of days ago. I saved it about how to effectively how to effectively argue about abortion rights with people who just don't get it. I assume they mean me. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. I might break this up into separate videos. We'll see how long each segment is. Uh, I might do one where it's just the argument about abortion. Second video, uh, just looking at some of the objections. Uh, and then third, I might look at that article on, on Yahoo. So uh, let's take a look at this. Um, yeah, making sure that everything's everything's all right. I can see that. Y'all can see both of us, right? So, okay. Look, so I've just titled this. I threw this PowerPoint together. Uh, you know, I'm not very savvy with technology, but look, this is just simply put the argument against abortion and really, quite honestly, stupid arguments for. Now, I do, I do want to be clear about something at the outset. When I'm uh, as polemical as I will be, uh, this is targeted specifically at mostly the white leftist liberals, you know, the shills who are screaming about abortions, right? Uh, this says I'm not targeting in any way anybody that's had an abortion. That's a separate conversation, I would think. Uh, this is purely an academic exercise for the shills who meme and think that they're actually putting forward an argument for why women should be allowed to murder their children. And uh, no, just not. So, <clears throat> So if you know anything about a basic argument, right, uh, simple syllogism in its most simplistic form uh, has two premises, two premises, one conclusion, right? So let's look at premise one. This is where the argument starts, right? First of all, uh, that it is always morally wrong to deliberately take innocent human life. Right? It is always morally wrong to deliberately take innocent human life. So first, uh, just note those key phrases, right? We'll look at what it means to say why uh, morally wrong, but note the emphasis on, on the fact that it is deliberate, right? The deliberate taking of innocent human life, 
right? That's important too, right? This is what we call murder. When you deliberately kill an innocent person, right, this is murder, okay? Now, this just follows from basic principles of natural philosophy. This is one of the things I get into even when I teach my undergraduates, uh, why I talk about Aristotle's physics, uh, his notion of natural philosophy, why this is so important, right? Because any sort of ethical argument is always going to be grounded on the way that things are, right? Ethics is determined by being, philosophically speaking, right? Excuse me. So... This notion that it's always morally wrong to deliberately take innocent human life does follow from just basic principles of natural philosophy. And this has to do with the idea of a perfection of a thing, right? So perfection can come in levels, right? But something has to exist. Something has to be first in order to be perfected. And for this reason, my second uh, sub point here, right? The perfection, the, the first perfection of a thing right? The first perfection of a thing is that it exists, right? So, you know, I'm drinking my uh, heavenly roast seraphic coffee. In order for this to be a good cup of coffee, uh, or, or to have, you know, all of the perfections of a cup of coffee, it, it has to be a cup of coffee first, right? Mm. This is one of the differences, you know, that's why you can have a good cup of coffee, you can have a bad cup of coffee, but you have to have the coffee first before it has any sort of qualities to it, right? So the first perfection of something is that it exists, right? And obviously, if something's going to attain any of its perfections or if it's going to develop further, it has to be an existing thing first, right? Sometimes in this argument, people talk about acorns and oak trees and blah, 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 and whatever. Right? But in order for the acorn to develop into the tree, it does have to exist first, right? The first perfection of a thing is its existence. And then other perfections can be added onto that. Other developments can be added onto that. And if something perfects another thing, it is said to be good for that thing, right? The thing being perfected. And this follows, I mean, think about any instance in which you use the term good. I guarantee you, Whenever you talk about a good something, you always mean something that fulfills uh, its nature, right? Something that does what it's supposed to do well, right? Talk about a good cup of coffee versus a bad cup of coffee, right? A good car versus a bad car, right? A good student, someone that does their homework and studies and is engaged in class and whatever, right? Versus a bad student and so on. Anytime you talk about something's being good, you talk about doing what it's supposed to do well, right? A good knife, sharp, cuts well, well-balanced, whatever, right? Versus a bad knife, okay? So on. So if something is perfective of another thing, it's said to be good for that thing. And this is what brings us into the dimension of morality, right? Because it involves human choice. Right? That's what brings us into the realm of morality. So you ought to choose what is good for and what is perfective of something, right? That's what morality, that's what Aristotle's ethics, that's what all ethics is, is always about, right? Is choosing what's good for and perfective of, in the realm of ethics, uh, human nature, right? But as I said first, right, following from basic principles of natural philosophy, you have to know what human nature is. You have to know the nature of things before you know what's good for them. Right. But once you know what's good for them, you ought to choose what is good for and what's perfective of something. And that's why deliberately choosing against the good, deliberately choosing against what's perfective of something, that's what makes this morally wrong. Right. So for if so for innocent human life, right, obviously its first perfection is that it is. The first perfection of human beings is their life. As Aristotle says, right, for a living thing uh, to be is to be alive, right? For a living thing to be is to be alive. And so the first perfection of a living thing is going to be its life. The first perfection of human beings is their life, right? Their existence. Right? And to deliberately choose against that life to choose against that good, that perfection of the human person, that's what makes this morally wrong, right? So premise one, it is always morally wrong to murder another person, right? To deliberately take innocent human life. 
I mean, that seems to be without contention to me, right? Most people agree murder is wrong, right? You do not take uh, innocent human life, right? So premise two, this is just a definition that abortion is the deliberate taking of innocent human life. This is almost obvious, right? The first marks of life, if you've ever even taken high school biology, you know that the first marks of life are something's taking in nutrition and its growth, right? For this reason, I mean, even this is why we call even bacteria are alive, right? They take in nutrition, they nourish themselves, they grow. And so on even this, this most basic high school level biology definition, right? The fertilized egg, right? This moment of conception, right after the moment of conception, this is a living thing. I mean, even to a certain extent, uh, even the sperm and the egg prior to fertilization, these are living things, uh, but it's not a human living thing, not yet, right? But the fertilized egg is, right? And we see that in the second sub point, right? This has to be a human life based on the fact that it has a complete set of DNA, right? It's a complete set of DNA that is entirely separate from the mother's DNA. And kind of based on the fact that, as far as I know, two human beings, two people have never reproduced anything other than a human person, right? That's kind of, you know, it's kind of just what this does. Sex makes new people, okay? The first sign of that is uh, you don't get new people any other way than the sexual interaction of a man and a woman, right? Or at least the sexual in, or the interaction of the sexual cells, right? A sperm and an egg. That's the only way you get new people, right? And so this has to be even not only obvious, like again, high school biology, this is life. This clearly has to be a human kind of life. It's genetic, genetically human life. This has to be a human person in its earlier, in its earliest stages, right? You look at me, I'm 35, I'm an adult, more or less, right? Uh, you can look at a picture of me from 18 years ago when I was almost 18, right? And then another picture from like, I don't know, when I was five, another picture from when I was just born. But you can go even further, right? You can look at my sonogram, right? Some of the technology even exists now for even better pictures, of it, right? And you can see that this is, that there is a continuous line of development from this fertilized egg, right? And you can see this continuous line of development from this entity into now the entity that sits before you, right? Looking at the screen, trying to make an argument okay? or any other person. Right from from the time that they are a fertilized egg, from the time uh, all of the stages of development, right to the time that then that they're born, and then they become a toddler, and then a small child, and a teenager, and an adult. Right, this continuous, uh, continuous uh, uh, line of development. Right, that this is one thing at different stages of development. Right, uh, my childhood self was not a different entity than my adult self. Right. It's a further stage of development of the same thing. And as Aristotle shows in the categories, right, substance does not admit of degree, right? Uh, like if you have an apple and another apple, right, one apple is not more apple than the other. It could be more red, it could be sweeter, it could be more tart, it could be larger or smaller or whatever, right? But it can't be more apple than another apple, right? Category of substance does not admit of degree, right? And human beings, human persons are substances, right? You are a substance. And therefore, if you are a person at any point in your development, right? I, th I think I would say I'm a person, uh, then you must be a person at all points of your development because the category of substance does not admit of degree and human persons are substances and therefore personhood does not admit of degree. You either are a person or you're not. And if you are the same entity across all stages of developments, then that your personhood persists across all stages of development. And not to mention, finally, an entity like this, this, you know, this fertilized egg de develops along the lines the way that human beings develop, right? 
it it you can even see it start to look like a child like a like a child like a human being even in the womb very very early on uh it's born it becomes a toddler becomes a child and a teenager and then an adult right and the only thing that develops like human beings are last time i checked human beings right so if it's always wrong to deliberately take innocent human life and abortion is right the deliberate taking of innocent human life, we have our conclusion then that abortion uh, is always morally wrong, right? This just follows from the argument as, as we've presented it, right? It is always morally wrong to deliberately take innocent human life, and abortion is. It just is the deliberate taking of an innocent human life. And it follows from that argument, then, that abortion is always morally wrong, without exception, right? That there is no case where the deliberate taking of innocent human life is permitted. All right. So that'll do it for this, right? Oh, there goes my power cord. Anyway, that'll do it for this. Uh, I think I'll separate these videos out. Uh, so for now, right, this is just, this is the argument plain and simple, right? It's always morally wrong to deliberately take innocent human life. Abortion is the deliberate taking of innocent human life, and therefore abortion is always morally wrong. Now, if you want to refute this argument, and this is where I'll end right now, if you want to refute this argument, you have to, one, show that my logic is bad here. And I'll tell you right now, the logic is rock solid, right? These terms connect in such a way that that conclusion necessarily follows, right? Two, you would have to show that one of my premises is false, right? You would have to show me that there is an instance where it's morally right to murder another person, right? And note, murder, not kill, right? Self-defense, different. Capital punishment, different, okay? Self-defense, uh, and even in the case of capital punishment, you're not really dealing with innocence anymore. You're also dealing with, uh, you're dealing with other factors too, right? So you would have to show me one instance where it is in fact morally right to deliberately kill an innocent human person, right? Or you would have to take issue with my definition, right? Uh, that abortion is not the deliberate taking of innocent human life. You would have to show me then that this uh, this is not a life, that it's not a human life, that it's not a human person. And I've tried to put forward uh, arguments th that shows that all of that is in fact the case. Or three, you would have to take issue with maybe one of the, the terms. Maybe something I'm saying isn't clear, maybe it's vague, maybe I'm being ambiguous. Uh, Something like that, right? But those are your options. Either my logic is faulty, one of the terms is unclear, or one of my premises is false. That's the only way that you answer this argument, right? So think about that. Uh, we'll look in the next video on some of the objections, or at least some of the common objections that I hear uh, concerning why uh, abortion should be legal or moral or whatever. So uh, for now, take care. We'll look at these objections in the next video. See you next time.